Join us at your own university. Like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. You're not going to want to miss a bit of this. So welcome back. This is podcast two, but I wanted to uh, review podcast one first, just a little bit, just give you the points. Uh, and then the Joaquin Phoenix quote, which um, I said I would, and I hadn't last time. So here it will be. So in short, the point uh, last time was that we're after this endeavor of helping others uh, by knowing ourselves, uh, which is a process for each of us that is inescapable. Uh, and yet innately rich, if not also immediately fulfilling. And I thought the upcoming Joaquin Phoenix quote grounded this um, in a way. And there's one th word he used that I'm replacing to fit a little more precisely what we're talking about. He talks about guiding each other toward redemption, and I'm just going to replace redemption with something else. So here it is. This is Joaquin Phoenix uh, at an acceptance speech of an award for something I don't know precisely what. So he said, <clears throat> we fear the idea of personal change because we think we have to sacrifice something to give something up. But human beings at our best are so inventive and creative and ingenious. And I think that when we use love and compassion as our guiding principles, we can create, develop, and implement systems of change that are beneficial to all sentient beings and to the environment. I think that's when we are at our best, when we support one another, not when we cancel each other out for past mistakes, but when we help each other to grow, when we educate each other, when we guide each other toward our greatest, most whole, fulfilling, and harmonious ideals. That is the best of humanity. Nice. And that is the quote. I liked it. it. It stuck with me for sure. So cool. there it is. Some food for thought, y'all. Yay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to let you lead us into just talking about how we met today. Antika, I just thought it was, would be a good time to get into that from last meeting. We kind of laid down the groundwork of here's what we're after and how did this begin? Yeah. So cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to your own university TV. My name is Lisha Antica, and this is Jim's beside us, me here, you. And we are um, really just starting out this podcast, which is really exciting. Your own university um, was really a development over time of a dream of mine, but it was seeded or began through a conversation that Jim's and I had um, over 20 years ago, now that it's 2021. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I don't really know where to begin of, of how we met besides in yoga teacher training. So both of us are yoga teachers. Um, in 2000, I was at a Bikram Yoga College of India teacher training in Los Angeles. And I met a ton of people. I mean, there was like 200 of us, right? So there was a ton of people there. And, um, and Jim's just stood out to me. We had a few meals, said hi, whatever. Um, and then it ended up that he lived really close to me, nearly in the same town as me in California, Northern California, where um, we both went back to at the time. So it was just convenient to continue our friendship. And we have a lot of interests, including yoga, health and wellness, um, psychology, sex and sexuality, communication, um, and just wellness and knowing ourselves in general and this, this desire to seek our truth, to know our truth and to express our truth. And so we had some great conversations about that. And um, we're planning a couple of businesses actually. We're quite business partners. Um, one was Twist Yoga, which I ended up uh, creating and creating a Twist Yoga methodology for yoga teacher trainings and stuff like that, twistyoga.com. And, um, but we were going to do that in Davis. We even looked at places and everything. And then, Good place. Um, yeah, it was yeah. going to be amazing. Um, <laughs> but I met a boy. I met a boy. And um, he brought me to Alaska and I proceeded to have a family. But before I met the boy, um, Jim's and I were talking in a cafe. I think we were in Sausalito, if I remember correctly. 
And we're just having this conversation about a community. Um, we're, I think we're talking more of like a physical community of, of people that were in the same location that were studying about holistic learning and, and themselves from everything from running businesses and prosperity to sexuality and sensuality to deep healing and, and transpersonal experiences. And, um, and we were messing around with, with names and different things like that. And your own university, the school, your own school, your own curriculum, it can't be, it, it can't be faked. It can't be brought together by anybody. It's you studying your own curriculum to know yourself, right? Self-mastery, whatever that means, um, to, to come together. And then the acronym Y-O-U, your own university, Y-O-U came to be. So in 2010, when I opened, when I went to open up Twist Yoga Online and open my holistic coaching business and training, um, I opened your own university online. And I think, I think that's when I first reached out to you and was like, hey, it's been forever. And I'm using this name and I already used this name. I was just feeling a little bit like, like, why am I continuing on these same dreams? Um, and Jason was like, wow. And we caught up. He had been traveling the world. I'll let you tell your side of the story in, in a second. And um, and that's that's how your own university really began is, is my own quest to study. I, I've spent, um, you know, a price quota of a home on self-development and programs and trainings and certifications. A solid home. Degree. Uh, right, my degree, I'm almost a doctor. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it's been really fun. It's been a growing experience. It's been a humbling experience and terrifying experience um, for me. I'm very vulnerable, um, opening everything that your own university has. And then a couple years ago, I just felt like um, I was really catering to women and yet a lot of my clients were men and I wanted to be able to express for them, but the respect letters, that is one of our foundations at your own universe. We have love letters for women and respect letters for men. Um, I just couldn't write because I don't have a masculine mind. I am a girl. And I tried to get other boyfriends of people to write them um, in partnerships and it just did, it didn't work because I knew in my heart of hearts that um, you know, the father of this project is Jim's and it took a Thank couple you. years for him to yeah. um, figure everything out to, to come and be a part of this and, and step into this role that he is here now. The respect letters are there waiting for you, men. You are held, you are taken care of, I'll hold you. Women, he'll hold you too. But um, you know, we're not like one side, one side, but when it comes to really creating beautiful habits, um, his input has been paramount. And I love how we studied and we've both kind of followed that same path. So anyway, that's my story around us meeting in this. What's your story, Jims? Well, I'll start it as, like this, um, and this will be on, this will be an ongoing conversation. But uh, first of all, in short, you held the space for me for decades, <laughs> or however long it was, to join this project of you. Right? Would you say that's accurate? In a way, yeah, I mean, figuratively. Did. Yeah, as soon as I. That's how I feel. Started, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, what year was it? You said so. Uh, you you mentioned a year when you kind of came together and then you gave me a shout. What year was that? Do you remember? 2010 is when your oh, university went online. Yeah. The only reason I, in, yeah. I think you were in China. I think in 2010, I was actually in California, but um, yeah. So I'm from California mostly though I'm bred of New Yorkers. So I kind of feel like a New Yorker on the inside, although most of my at real through and through New York cousins would laugh at me saying that and think it doesn't have a place. But um, so I was at home, what I consider home in California around that time. I remember that because of a relationship I was 
in that was rekindling that didn't work out. We're still really good friends and I, I love her to, to death. Um, we're still in touch, but, um, so I was about, I was either getting back into a school to get my master's of education or, um, I was doing that already because it was by 2012 is when I finished that. And that's when I went to China for the second time. Okay. So maybe I should just start just to be more linear about it in case, you know, people are interested and, uh, to have it make sense. We'll obviously jump around. That's life. That's a part of the point, And there needs to be space for that as well, too. Um, but yeah, I'll try to start linearly. And so um, the year that we did our training, was that 2000 or 1999? I think I, we're right on the cusp. Yeah, I think we, we were. 99 and we finished in 2000. We did. And I remember why now. So. Uh, another relationship at the time, someone else I miss very much w with whom I'm not in touch actually. But um, yeah, so we were in this training. Um, it was a yoga training, yoga asana training. It was, well, it was a Bikram training, which in a way is like its own thing. Um, and, and so we each followed those paths afterwards for a little bit together. And then, like you said, you met a boy, which was, I guess, 2000 by then and you went to Alaska. It would have been after we probably already took trips to Davis to even look at properties. Yeah, I mean, we Davis, Colorado, like we were pretty yeah, serious right. actually about yeah. creating these businesses. Like, yeah, I, well, clearly. I was just continuing on a, a dream, you know, and I think you did the same thing with your yoga studio. That yeah, came. what? Right. So I, I guess it's because you met a boy. It, I mean, you know, we were sort of out together and I think it was, it worked out as it was meant to, and probably in yeah. both of our eyes. Um, uh, but probably the helpful point that punctuated it, s since you're so actionable in this whole project, you've really been the actionable one in this whole project, starting with you probably, I'm guessing you'd said, okay, I'm going to go to Alaska now, which punctuated. Okay. So I'm going to go my other direction. In any case, I ended up teaching, you know, in California. I started in Southern California. That's down where our training was. It was in Los Angeles. And, uh, and then I did that for a while until, God, time really erases the memory, doesn't it? I can't remember who I knew exactly, but I did have a, a, an Austin mentor for a while. His name's Benson. What's up, Benson? I haven't talked to him in decades. I remember um, Benson. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm, I was already known him then. And he would have set me up with my first job um, down south, even though he was probably based already up in San Francisco. Yeah, he was in San Francisco. And I, I taught there for a while, which led into transitioning from my graphics career to my yoga career, to working for Benson at Yoga Haven, um, whose logo I designed. And uh, I just laugh about that because I just remember some colleagues, some liked, some, some liked it, some didn't like it. Um, and that led to me buying a studio from Benson eventually. And so I'm just curious around that time, this would have been, let's just say if we were two years after our trainings, like 2002, what were you up to? So I'm trying to like parallel what I was doing with what you're doing No. Okay, so this 2002, I was- um, One or two or, or thereabouts. Yeah, I got married in 2002. In 2002, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you actually, so you just held your relationship for a while before you got married. A year. Yeah. Okay. So we must have met, yeah. Yeah. In 2001, June, when I moved here in February, 2002, I'm still in Alaska, everybody. And then, yeah. um, yeah, got married in July, 2002. So let me ask you from a, so let's get into a man, woman, a little bit here, actually, this is a good opportunity. So I'm curious from a, from a, a male standpoint, and, w and I know w the way we talk about it and we dress it as I, I hope you mentioned uh, in the last podcast, or if we didn't masculine and feminine, which is far more accurate and encompassing than male and female, really. Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. I can definitely be in my masculine and I'm always female. Yeah, no, you, you've scared me in your masculine in a masculine way, but maybe that was my feminine being scared. And it, I just, and I say that now just to say that I'm going to say male and female, men and women a lot, because obviously it's going to be what applied practically, but it's not actually the point. And I don't actually hold too hold, you know, hard and fast to that as, as the larger principle that I, I from which I would gain wisdom. So, yeah. um, but, so I'm going to say now that from the, from the man's viewpoint, from the masculine or whatnot viewpoint, um, I'm just curious, like, 
did you have it in your head that you were going to wait for a year before you got married or were you just going with the flow and like how much of that has to do with your personality or how much of that has to do with being uh, female or feminine or you know between 2000 and 2002 you know what in all honesty um i was going to be a singer right and, and oh yeah and she's good folks and and yeah. and everything and and yeah that's what I was doing, creating my CD and, and I remember that yoga and, you know, performing in San Francisco and stuff. So, um, I, I didn't have any idea about marriage or what I was getting myself into actually. So you were focused um, on yourself, like just when, pretty much focused on yourself here, or you just going to have I a boy? I, or? I just was so excited to be chosen. Wow, does that feel like we should listen to that? Like as a man, we should probably listen to that, right? From a woman's yeah. viewpoint. Yeah. Would you say that your friends would say the same thing, female friends, or that that seems to be tr like a commonality with women or is that just you? Well, I think anybody, I think my male clients too, especially, I mean, don't like second guess that. Like my male clients, yeah. they, it's important. Like if you're not gonna choose somebody, don't be with them. <laughs> like don't be with them. It's, um, yeah, so I mean, I was only chosen for maybe six months of the 14 year relationship, but I, um, that six months while I was moving up here and, and planning my marriage, I think was, was pretty important. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in 2002. <laughs> you mean it was pretty important that you got married in 2002 or pretty important? Well, it was that pretty you... important in 2002. Like that's, I, I think that's why I moved up here is just like, yeah just you know had had that pull at 36 or 26 to to have a family and yeah that was my answer all right well for me that's a trevor chove that i'm sure i want to get back into but um i'll, I'll pause there on that uh line of questioning <laughs> this is just my natural way everyone i'm actually not trying to drill uh lisha here it's just this is just how i kind of think so i'm letting it out um i'm just ultra curious um Cool. So in terms of yoga then, so, um, and so you're getting into your own business, right? Uh, yeah. So were you doing twist? Were you revamping twist? Were you twist until after I had Lily. So my oldest daughter or my youngest daughter, I mean, was born in 2005. So it was a few, few years. I was just having babies. Yeah. Got okay. married, built some houses, had some odd jobs, did real estate, had babies. All right. A and lot can happen in a few. Yeah. 2006 is when I opened up Twist Yoga. So when did you have your yoga studio? All right. So um, I went from Benson to his studio to my studio. I bought it in 2002. It was called, okay. I actually don't know what it was called. It was probably called, it might've been called Bikram Yoga College of India, um, Castro or something. Anyway, I bought that in 2002 and I had it for a couple of years, like meaning the literal couple. So I had it for two years, I had it till 2004, at which point I sold it to Lamont, who's someone else we trained, trained with a good friend. Um, yeah. You know, some friends you keep in touch regularly, some you don't, but then when you meet back up, it's just like old times. I have multiple friends like that. Lamont is one, one of them, though I'm starting to miss him. It's been a bit too long. Lamont, if yeah, you happen to you find are. your way to there, please reach back to me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all right. So, and then in 2004 is when Patrick, who was another colleague we had, who's an amazing yoga asana instructor. And he really just took that and ran. He was, uh, ended up being called honestly, the, the little, no, not little, the young, maybe the little anyway, Patrick, let us know if you happen to come across this, but John friend. So the little John friend, so John friend did a lot. If you haven't heard of him, he created, um, I, I heard he actually created the yoga works, um, methodology in a codified way, though. That's not necessarily on record. Um, different story there. Um, but he certainly created Anusara yoga. Yeah. Anusara. Yeah. So if you've heard of Anusara yeah. yoga, that's John friend's creation. Um, yeah. so I went to Hong Kong. Patrick had met, uh, in, in Whistler where Patrick's from, <clears throat> He had met uh, a someone named Colin, who is a, a British uh, Hong Konger. I don't know precisely where he was from or where he moved or whatnot, but um, 
he had done very well for himself through a video company. So he had, he had mad resources, at least from my perspective, um, enough that he could hire on Patrick who, you know, knew a lot of yoga instructors and, and called me up. So I was in Hong Kong starting in 2005, maybe just before, but 2005. So in 2006, I was like well into my Hong Kong pure, it's pure yoga, pure yoga experience. And I taught FYI and, um, in Hong Kong. And, uh, I think that's for, for pure yoga. That's, that's where I taught. Um, cool. So 2006, I was in the middle of it. And so 2006 is when you started twist and we weren't talking then. 2006 is when I started twist and the yoga teacher trainings and all of that. There you go. So this is so interesting. A journey. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because around that time, so Patrick, you know, I'd been practicing for a while. I was, we had some younger folks involved. So maybe that was part of it, but you know, he asked me, Hey, do you want to be a, you know, why don't you be, why don't you be a yoga manager? Because they were, it's a company with lots of resources. So they were creating positions and a hierarchy and all this sort of thing that happens in corporations and companies and, and pure yoga is the largest yoga company in the world. Um, wow. yeah, so it was, it was big. And, uh, but at that time, because I was in a relationship with this person I'd mentioned earlier in this podcast, um, I don't know. Should we be saying names or not? Or anyway, um, I'd have to check in with Probably her. Probably should get... ask their permission before we say their names. So maybe you'll have to cut out that moment. Sorry for each of the names. I don't, I said. I don't think you said any names yet. Well, I have. I've oh, said... I'm talking about girlfriends. Oh, yes. No, I mean, no. Business wise, if you're promoting a person business wise, like they, we can all use as much promotion. You can talk about me all the time when it comes to business. Just... Okay. Well, let me just quickly go back and say, I'm not sure what Patrick is up to now, but it's Patrick Creelman, amazing guy, amazing yoga instructor, really gifted that way. Um, Lamont, as far as I know, still owns a yoga studio now in Germany. I can't remember which town. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, there's so many other promotions we can give. Some of them don't need it. Uh, one couple made uh, millions with uh, Bikram Yoga Studio in Amsterdam, Therese and uh, her, who became her husband, who wasn't yeah. in our training, but she was. Remember Therese? Yeah, I do. She was in San yeah. Francisco for she a She was minute. cool too. Yeah. I don't remember ah. her last name right now, but um, okay. So uh, what was I getting into there? Um, no, I think we have three minutes, so. Well, at least I should remember just to leave the bookmark there for next time. But um, you were doing Twist 2006. Oh, right. I was just going to mention, this will be a good place to start for next time. But I for I forewent, if you can say that. I, I passed on Patrick's invitation to do that, to be a yoga managing teacher um, for my relationship. Because I explicitly had already decided in my life that I need, wanted to set aside time for my woman. Mm -hmm. um, and nice idea. Um, it didn't work out for me. And I, I would like to be able to try again. And I, I believe that if it's going to happen, it can happen, you know, in this world of things that I'm doing now, including you. And I really don't, I'm not, I really honestly think those things kind of relate in a, in sort of a mystical way. So yeah. anyway, I, I'm going to, I'm going to probably want to talk about that. Maybe you can even coach me through it. <laughs> um, Lish among other things is, is, uh, is, as I think, you know, a, a holistic uh, psychologist. Did I get the title right? Um, and uh, anyway, holistic work. So transpersonal is holistic. <laughs> so whether you, uh, title. cool. So whether you coach me, uh, you know, officially next time, or we just talk as friends, maybe we can pick it up from there. Um, yeah. So that sounds fantastic. So I just want to know, like, before we do cut it off, like, um, like, what were you doing in 2010 when your own university opened online? I was with that. Uh, I was getting together with, getting together with, or about to get together with a new, you know, again, that same woman who I was just mentioned, uh, at which point we're going to, when I, when I didn't take the uh, yoga managing teaching position. That it's the was same person. It was both 2005. Uh, and I met her actually before I went to Hong Kong. So I met her because I had actually gone to Europe to teach some Bikram at different studios. And oh. I met her in Madrid. Nice. So yes. And then 2010, we'd already been through iterations of our relationship, having lived together in Hong Kong, et cetera, et cetera, which I'll get into next time. But um, then I was back in California and we were again about to get back together. Uh, okay. Cool. to be married actually so cool. 
I thought I knew who you're talking about. Now yes. I know who you are. <laughs> All right. She's awesome. That is so cool. Yeah. yeah. And then 2014, I got my divorce. And that's when Twist Yoga or Your Own University became um, a, a real platform for me to share other coaches and and wisdom. And uh, I had Hugs Radio and Shine Radio and, and my own business. And um that's when we the directory came into be and the master classes began and all of that is in 2015 really the end of 2014 beginning of 2015 and um then 2016 we put the love letters together because i wrote my book um ageless beauty timeless truths with dr diadio moses and that's when i started getting like <gasps> We need a guy. I need a male energy. I can't write this for girls. I mean, for boys. Um, I just didn't feel authentic. Okay. Right? And so you coming in and taking that role now is just amazing. Amazing. Because now we have a whole school, you guys. The mastermind is going to be full and the love letters are done. Your daily support is done. The master classes have been going on forever. We have such a great system of master classes. One just came out, yes, or today um or this week for the 23rd if you want to um join go to your own university.com because we have a master class all about directing and starring in your own life with um jd so she is a director producer and um has worked in hollywood and san francisco and all over the place and is just a really dynamic fun fun teacher so that's where all this stuff came together and now we're together. So yay. I can't yeah. wait to hear more about how it all aligns and how we align in our journeys. Um, in the next episode, I guess we'll just continue part two. We'll certainly yeah. get back to it, whether or not we do it next time, which we probably will. We'll certainly come back to it, but I'll just say yeah. real quick, we were talking a lot about Asana and obviously you is, if you notice, oops, I'm sorry. Um, that's my alarm. Um, you as a portal as well for for many courses including these yoga trainings that that lisha created so i just thought that was cool and we'll talk more about that too yeah i mean all right yoga saved our lives in a lot of ways definitely had you traveling around the world it sounds like it was certainly what i wanted to be doing and i went uh full bore into it that's for sure yeah that's awesome so, and i'm I See, still this is consider all about myself following your dreams everybody it's all about following your dreams so we hope to be an inspiration to you all right. So we See will you next talk time. to you next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.